The CSIRO GPU cluster is now open for business. In 2009, Dr John Taylor switched on CSIRO's GPU cluster. Uh, GPU computing is really is a revolution in computing. Uh, we've been able to uh, to take this new technology that was originally developed uh, to uh, to support computer games and apply it across the board in science. A GPU or graphics processing unit processes data much faster than the central processing unit or CPU found in your home computer. Joining many hundreds of GPUs with CPUs in one supercomputer means they can churn through masses of data in a very short time, speeding up image rendering, scientific calculations and computational models hundreds of times faster than CSIRO scientists were used to. Probably the most exciting moments are when, the, when I get a call or an email or somebody tells me that they've, they're, something's running a thousand times faster and they're really thrilled about it. <laughs> That's probably the most exciting thing. So it's a real, it's a real sign that the technology is, um, is very beneficial to people's uh, research and um, that people are getting great results. It's a 3D rendered view of uh, a 3D data set of a micro fossil, which is a tiny tooth from a prehistoric animal. The to whole tooth is uh, less than a millimetre across. It's a ceramic microsphere. It's made of silica and it has little bubbles in it and the whole thing's about 100 microns across. So that's about, only about half again as thick as a human hair, so it's quite small. CSIRO material scientists are using GPUs to create highly detailed images from 3D data sets collected at the Australian Synchrotron. When electrons are fired around this Olympic stadium-sized track, powerful magnets force them to take a circular path. As they do, they emit light, a million times brighter than the sun. This powerful beam can be focused at any wavelength down beam lines. X-rays, for example, build up a highly detailed picture of any target in their path. But it's a data-intensive task. Where scientists may have waited hours for their results in the past, the GPU cluster churns through the raw data quickly, displaying amazing images in real time. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's actually been really fun just from a sheer visual point of view and, and then, then we, can, we can get science from it too, of course. I think the fact that we've got everything in one place, so we've got our own synchrotron now and it's quite close and we've got ready access to a world-class beamline and if we have world-class computing facilities uh, to use with that, I think we can capitalise on that to, to a great extent and, and get a lot more out of our data and get our data much more quickly than we could in the past. What we're looking to do is model large-scale environmental systems uh, and using the GPU cluster we can do that more accurately, uh, more precisely and we can quantify uncertainty which is very important from a management perspective. When you do have a powerful machine like this, your productivity increases in a sense. What might have taken a few days might take a few hours now, what might have taken a week, or was completely infeasible because it was going to take a month. Well, that's out of the question in terms of productivity and the turnaround in your, in your work. Uh, if we can get results in a few hours or overnight and be looking at them the next morning, that really makes a difference as to how we can then say, uh, look at those results and make any adjustments we need to the model or, or our inputs or anything like this. And um, in terms of our workflow then, you know, this, this really opens up some opportunities for us. The problem that I've been working on the GPU uh, most for is to construct genetic maps in wheat and the issue there is that you actually have to calculate the distance between every position that you have on the genome in order to construct a map and so that actually means you're looking at um, the square of the number of positions that you have which uh, is where the the issues with computation come in um, but it does break up quite nicely for a GPU because you can look at each position individually and do it for each uh, wheat variety. And the idea there is really to improve um, the quality of wheat worldwide and to do it in a faster uh, way than has been done before. Really using the GPU cluster is quite interesting because it's a, a shift in the way we think about computation and we've gone from this sort of sequential computation, which is almost like following a recipe, right? And, and a, a sort of a cookbook recipe to uh, large scale parallelism. So, doing 
lots of tasks at a time as opposed to one long task very quickly. So people really need to rethink the algorithms that they use, rethink the, the approach that they use to their, to their um, particular computational challenges in science. And you need to be thinking about how can I divide up the work into lots of little small things that I can do concurrently as opposed to one sort of long recipe to follow. The top 500 list is a, it's very important. It provides us with some indication of how how uh, successful we've been in uh, ex in building and exploiting uh, computational facilities. The fact that also that we're very close to the top of the green 500 indicates that not only are we achieving a very high performance, but we're delivering that at very low energy costs. We're, we're reducing our carbon footprint, so we're able to deliver this fantastic capability at very low cost and very low energy cost. GPUs are an entirely new way of computing information. Rather than separating that information among hundreds of, of processors with very few cores, a GPU has hundreds of computing cores inside. So you can take that application and divide it among all those hundreds of energy efficient cores for very efficient processing of HPC applications. This is why the GPU is among the systems that are leading on the Green 500. The CSIRO GPU cluster is currently delivering 52.55 teraflops on the, the standard LIMPAC test in double precision. It's running at very high efficiency and it's consuming about 94.65 kilowatts of electricity when it's doing that. That means that we're able to achieve about 555 megaflops per watt of energy consumed. So that puts us very close to the top of the of the green 500. The cluster was uh, upgraded from originally the original Tesla S1070s to the latest generation S2050s. We've seen about a five to six x improvement in performance. So yeah, I think it's been it's been a fantastic um, uh, year or so, it's been, and I think a lot of people have really enjoyed the benefits of our new GPU-based uh, cluster. It allows you to think of problems that you wouldn't have been able to address before. When we first started on this, the, the few of us who are now um, talking at these workshops were the only ones in the GPU cluster and we could submit jobs and they would all run immediately. And we see now we submit jobs and they all go into quite a long queue um, because people are actually starting to use it and, and, um, and starting to, to realise the benefits of it. A year ago we didn't really know what the uptake was going to be within CSIRO. Now we know that it's been quite strong and it's been, we've been very successful. So, so I think, yeah, a year on we can see that we're on the right track and we can also see a track that's leading forward with this technology for the next few years.